So Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia, who I'm told is still a Democrat, but for all intents and purposes is a Republican, decided to make an endorsement. And he ran an ad for a Republican. It's a congressional race taking place in West Virginia, and it's a Republican primary that he decided to weigh in on. And, you know, there's a Democratic Party primary taking place, but he's like, mm, I care more about the Republican primary because I'm a Democrat. Now, if that fact alone, him doing an ad, a Democrat doing an ad for a Republican wasn't absurd enough, what he says in this ad is even more outrageous because he's going to brag about obstructing his party's agenda and then say, you should support this Republican because he also agrees with me that obstructing Democrats is good. Take a look. I've always said, if I can't go home and explain it, I can't vote for it. And that's why I oppose Build Back Better. For Alex Mooney and his out-of-state supporters to suggest David McKinley supported Build Back Better is an outright lie. David McKinley has always opposed reckless spending because it doesn't make sense for West Virginia. Alex Mooney has proven he's all about Alex Mooney, but West Virginians know David McKinley is all about us. I'm David McKinley and I approve this message. That's someone who many Democrats, I hate to say it, some progressives included, claimed was a good faith actor. To suggest David McKinley supported Build Back Better as an outright lie, David McKinley has always opposed reckless spending. Understand why this is a fuck you to his constituents in West Virginia. He's saying that universal pre-K, expanding Medicare, doing all of these good things that benefit you, that's reckless spending. When we spend money on our military, when we give aid to human rights abusers, that's not reckless spending. But reckless spending is when we do anything to help normal Americans. So it's like he's spitting in the faces of his constituents, but yet he's more popular in West Virginia for opposing Build Back Better. So, you know, we live in a bizarre and insane, frankly, uh, world. But take a look at who he's endorsing. So if you go to David McKinley's page, this is what he puts front and center. 92% Trump voting score, 100% pro-life rating, A rating from the NRA. Why even be a Democrat at this point? I genuinely don't understand it. I, I just don't understand it. Now, also, the key issues that McKinley is running on is securing the border, and on top of that, he wants an economic package for West Virginia. Now, you might think, oh, wow, that sounds kind of populist. Okay, well, the devil is in the details. What's in it? Well, it's investing in coal and natural gas. So it's kind of like the opposite of the Green New Deal. And Joe Manchin's like, you know what? I'm not going to sit this one out. I'm going to weigh in. I'm going to endorse the Republican. Now, the thing is that we all expect this from Joe Manchin, right? But... This is a failure of leadership more so than anything. If you have a party that lacks discipline to the extent where they're literally running ads, bragging about obstructing their own party and endorsing the opposition, that shows that leadership has failed. I mean, Democrats often brag about the Democratic Party being a Big Ten party, but has that not proven to be a catastrophic failure if the tent is so big that you let in Republicans like Joe Manchin? I mean, why call him a Democrat? He's a Democrat because he has a D in front of his name. But effectively, he is a Republican. He caucuses with the Republican Party. He votes with the Republican Party. He obstructs his own party's agenda. So why allow this to happen? At a minimum, punish him. Do something. But no, because the Democratic Party's leadership is feckless. And it's a microcosm of a bigger issue. It's just, you know, not about them being feckless uh, cowards. It's also about them really being aimless and not knowing what to do. And so, you know, they're looking at November and they're thinking, oh my God, this is going to be a bloodbath. What do we do? Well, the strategy, according to an article by Jonathan Lemire of Politico, is to resurrect an old failed strategy. President Joe Biden and fellow Democrats have struggled to overcome historical headwinds and worrisome economic trends in the lead up to the midterms. So aides are scheming up something else, turning the campaign into a contrast with Donald Trump and the Republicans. Biden, who has tried to pivot back toward domestic matters while also tending to the war in Ukraine, gave a hint of the upcoming strategy on his recent West Coast swing, in which he blasted the GOP for falling under the control of far-right extremists. This ain't your father's Republican Party, said Biden, who declared it the MAGA party now, and that Republicans now are afraid to act correctly because they know they'll be primaried if they don't toe the line set by Trump and his acolytes. Never mind the fact that we just saw this strategy fail with Terry McAuliffe in his gubernatorial race against Glenn Youngkin, but you're effectively campaigning 
for Republicans by doing this. Because the reason why so many Republicans running for Congress kowtow to Donald Trump is because that's what the base wants. So who is this strategy supposed to appeal to? Congressional Republicans who, you know, deep down, they don't believe what they're saying, but they're just saying what they need to say to get elected. Like, this isn't going to appeal to voters because the voters like the batshit insane bullshit from Donald Trump. The more insane the Republican gets, the more popular the party becomes. So who is this supposed to appeal to? And see, this is just, it's such a huge issue. The Democratic Party is so lost. You have members of their own party playing for the other team while claiming to still represent the party. They don't have a message. They can't get anything done legislatively. And Biden won't take executive action to do the things that he can't do legislatively. But yet, they don't know what to do. They're so clueless as to why young people are checking out, why so many voters are opting to not show up in November. It's because there is failure after failure. I mean, there was a little bit of hope. You saw the positive reaction last week when there was this rumor based on a conversation between a member of the Hispanic caucus and Joe Biden that he would be canceling a substantial amount of student debt, perhaps $50,000, perhaps all of it. Um, but then the next day, Biden was like, mm, yeah, fuck no, I'm not going to do that. No, not going to cancel 50000 So whatever he can do to actually become more popular, he's not doing and the democratic party they let people like joe manchin into the party to ruin and water down the entire party and, and so you know at some point the democratic party they have to stop blaming the left for all of their failures and look in the mirror and realize that all of the failures the reason why republicans are so extreme right now is because you allowed them to get this extreme i mean republicans are looking at a six-week abortion ban that's what they're going to introduce into congress if they're able to uh, take back the House of Representatives. A six-week abortion ban, a federal abortion ban, I should be clear. And yet, you're just, you're not going to combat that? I mean, abortion overall is something that Americans, by and large, support. They're reasonable enough to support that. I mean, Democrats back down when it comes to the grooming talk. They just, they refuse to fight. They're the biggest assets to Republicans, basically, because they're so weak they're complicit effectively so it's incredibly demoralizing you know we're in a situation that's so bad that we have democrats cutting ads for republicans where he attacks democrats and brags about obstructing their agenda but yet the democratic party establishment doesn't know why they're losing and they still blame the left whenever they lose yeah it's just utter horseshit and, and it's incredibly frustrating it just feels like nothing is ever going to get better in this country Oh, man.